In a recent video, I shared with you that I replaced the whole of my studio with a simple and fascinating Rodecaster Pro 2. It's become my integrated audio solution for all my production needs. It's pretty good. And uh, while some of you may have said in that initial video that my sound was not perfect, I really wanted to dial it in and get it as good as possible. And I think it's a lot better now. And I've had time now, weeks in fact, to use this piece of kit and really dial in those settings and get what I think are the Rodecaster Pro 2 ultimate settings. And I'm going to share them with you in this video, so make sure you watch all the way to the end to get a note of all the videos. Feel free to pause and rewind and take uh, screenshots so that you can copy those settings. But with that said, remember the settings will be different for me uh, than they will be for you. You might be using a different microphone, you might have a different setup, you might have more room noise, you might have sibilance in a different part of your voice. Yeah, voice processing is complex and that's why Rode made it easy with some of their easy presets. But we don't want easy, that's why you're watching this video. You want ultimate settings. So without further ado, let's get in and let's choose mic channel 1 on my Rodecaster Pro 2. Now you'll notice usually it's in the simple effects and you've just got some very basic effects to work with here. I've got, well, eight of them to work with. So let's go in and take a look at the first one, which of course is the high pass filter. High pass filter I've completely disabled. My reasoning behind that is I do not need to roll off any bass on my microphone. If I want to do that, I'll do it in post-production, but I'd rather not do it through the desk. So while it's great to roll off the low end frequencies and get rid of rumble and hum, particularly if you're in an environment where you're near roads or airports or something like that, it could be good or you've just got a, a lot of plosives hitting your microphone. Uh, for me, I don't feel I need that. So we'll go along to the next effect, which is in fact the de -esser. And uh, I've set my threshold at minus 27, so it kicks in and de -esses. And you might see the sibilance there as I speak with an S. The little dip comes in, so everything is there. A ratio of 3 to 1. Attack and release as quick as possible. A little bit of gain to make sure I'm turning down just that much more. And the frequency for me is near around 7 kilohertz. Okay, it might be different for you. You can do analysis in Adobe Audition, and I've shown you in different videos how exactly to do that. So those are my DS settings. With that said, I've got a noise gate as well. And the beautiful thing about the Rodecaster Pro 2 is when I talk, you can see my audio get through. And when I go silent, there you go, it dips and the gate kicks in. Now for me, the threshold is minus 45. If you've got a louder room, you might want to make that threshold slightly higher. And if you've got a super quiet room, you could turn it, you could afford to turn it down even more if there's absolutely no fans or anything to worry about. I do have a computer near me with a fan, uh, so my noise gate is at minus 45. I find that to be a happy medium. Attack is around about 100 milliseconds because you want to give it a little bit of leeway before it kicks in. The hold, 50 milliseconds. Again, I say in videos where I work with Adobe Audition noise gates, Give a little bit of hold so you're not getting cut off, particularly if you find your words getting clipped. Hold, increase it, release at 50 milliseconds, range at 30. It gives just a nice range to make that noise gate work, uh, as opposed to not work. And uh, then I leave the... <laughs> however you say that word, at 0 0.25. Uh, that, that setting, in my opinion, has not been that important to my noise gate settings. Uh, maybe you can pronounce that word better than me. Uh, let's go on to compressor. Now, here I've got a light compressor running on my voice, just as I had with my old DBX286S. We've got threshold at minus 24. Ratio 3 to 1, which is a great speech compression ratio. Any higher, and we're going into radio imaging. Any lower, and we're not really compressing. Attack and release as tight as possible, turn those settings right the way down, and the gain increase by about 2 dB in order to just give a little bit of makeup when the compressor compresses down some of the loudest parts of the speech. On to equalizer. This is the bit everyone loves because it gives that unique studio sound. So I've worked on the high bell right up at the high end, 12,000 hertz or 12 kilohertz if you prefer, and I've turned that up by about 3 dB to give me that crisp, crispy sound. I like the crispy sound, so lots of crisps going on at the high end there. Um, I've also worked on the mid around the 1450 hertz or 1.45 kilohertz range. I've taken a bit of that out because I find that boxy and undesirable in my voice in particular, so 1.45. 4 dB reduction there. And then on the low bell, around 112, uh, kind of very near the, the low bass frequencies, I've just done a slight 0.6 dB 
increase there on my equalizer. On to the exciter now. And we've got two things here. This is an Aphex effect. This is like a real kind of, you know, enhancer on the voice, uh, kind of like low frequency and high frequency on the old DBX units. So the big bottom is tuned to, again, the low frequencies, 112 hertz, and I'm driving just 20%. I don't want too much low end. I don't want to sound like, you know, boomy butch kind of person, just a little bit of processing there. And the oral exciter is working around 2,247 hertz, around that sort of mid to high, mid, mid mid-high area of the voice and again I put 90% on the harmonics there I really want to get that crisp vocal presence and that is doing it for me right there panning is left at neutral I don't want to be over to the left or over to the right I want to be in the center thank you very much and that is completely it now if you hadn't seen my original video reviewing the Rodecaster Pro 2 and showing why I made the decision to throw out all my old analog gear and move digital to this one single unit not just the space saving kind of credentials and less cables and all of that, but there's all of that in the video, and I really suggest you click the link and watch that. For my next video, I'm going to work on the optimum settings for a Rodecaster Pro 2 with different microphones, not just Rode-specific microphones, and maybe the short SM7B, Blue Yeti. Anyway, comment in the comments down below and let me know which microphone or setup you'd particularly like settings for, and I'll work on those next. And remember, great audio videos just like this one are a plenty on my channel, so hit subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you've not done so already, check out musicradiocreative.com. This is where my team of 200-plus audio professionals can help you with voiceovers, radio jingles, DJ drops, podcast intros, music, ads, and much, much more. Until the next time, keep calm and produce on, my friends. Thumbs up! Subscribe for more! MusicRadioCreative.com